Hey guys, I was asked to put together a quick uh, instructional video, educational video uh, by a friend of mine here, a colleague in the office. Um, as some of you may or may not know, I work with Nallen Wealth Management um, along with a good friend of mine, Nolan Sandburn, that many of you follow. Um, we do a concept or we, we coach a concept called infinite banking and a lot of people ask us, you know, they know the basics of infinite banking and it's a cash value life insurance policy that's designed for cash accumulation, not death benefit. When properly structured, it's a tax-free vehicle and we can do a lot of wonderful things with it. Um, I want to really kind of strip it down to the numbers for you guys real quick and just understand that this is just simply a better place to park capital before we go deploy it, um, whether it's purchasing something for your regular life, an investment property, a um, investment in a business, uh, whatever it might be, you have to have a place where you park money and then it gets deployed and goes and, and goes gets hopefully a better rate of return. You know, so we're not trying to. There's a lot of guys across the country that talk about infinite banking and essentially try to sell it on a illustration. And I'm going to show you an example of an illustration at the end here, but that's not what we're trying to do. What you're going to do with the money is what's impactful. Um, but what we want to show you is if we have to rely on banks to to park our money, what if we used a different banking system, our own privatized, privatized banking system that we get to control, we get to capture the interest on, and we get to use the velocity of money in our lifetime to enhance our position. So let's just walk through the numbers, okay? So what you're looking at on the screen today is just a calculator. Um, and this calculator shows a bunch of numbers and, and it's complex and I apologize, but I'm gonna strip it down. Um, if you look at this column here, these are inputs, these are deposits that we would make into a, that's called a money market account. So let's just start with a baseline, money market account that we're gonna contribute $500,000 to for the first five years and then drop it down to $180,000 for the next five years, which the, the totals are down here at the bottom. So $3.4 million and let's give this earnings rate or this this money market account an earnings rate of 1.75 and this is over and i gotta move my picture here but over the next 35 years so this is a we'll say a 40 year old male putting money into an account for 10 years 3.4 million dollars into a money market account earnings 1.75 here's the earnings in this column here so as you guys know many of you know um, if you parked your money in a bank and you earned money in that account, you would have to pay taxes on that account. So I'm going to turn on, like, watch this number down here, 5.9, we'll call it, million dollars. And I'm going to turn on taxes, 37%, because most of the people we work with are in the highest income tax bracket, and they're paying last dollar in, as many of you know, in these interest-bearing accounts, you're taxed at the highest possible rate on any of the earnings from those accounts. So when you pay a tax, if you look at the cumulative tax liability that you're spending over your lifetime, it's 830,000. Well, we were at 5.9 and now we're at 4.8. So we went down 1.1 million, but we only paid 830,000. You know, that's just the first thing to point out that when, when these type of accounts get taxed, you're not only paying that tax, you're giving up the ability to earn on that money for the rest of your life. So it's a, it's a double tax, if you want to call it. Um, so just something to point out. But look, if we were going to park this much money into a money market account, we're going to buy stuff with it. So what does everybody tell you to do, uh, the financial entertainers out there? They tell you, go spend cash. Don't, don't use somebody else's money. Use your own cash and, and just take it out of your account and buy. So here's a couple examples. Let's go buy a car. Let's go buy a $60,000 SUV. You know, let's go buy something that real nice for the for the spouse, right? Uh, then then you comes along a couple years later, you run into an investment property. Let's say it's a commercial deal. You need to put two hundred thousand dollars in because it's a great return on investment. You're going to make money with your capital, so you took two hundred thousand out of your money market account and go put it into that deal. And then a, a couple years later, uh, someone brings a business proposal to you, half million dollars to get in on this business. It's going to be a great cash flowing property for you or whatever the long-term investment is. But let's just look at the math of the cash that you used 
to go make those investments. Those investments are great. Well, you know, the depreciating SUV is not great, but you got to keep the wife happy. So in my opinion, that's a great investment. Um, but the, the investment you made, you put $760,000 into these three purchases, right? You, you went and deployed that money somewhere else. Well, those investments cost you, uh, let's go back. Let me turn those off real quick. All right. And we were at 4.8 million. Sorry, I got to keep, got to keep track for you guys and, and myself. Um, so we were at 4.8 million. Now we went out and bought some things, bought those three things for 760,000. Look what happened to our balance. We are at 3.7 million. Okay. So we're just going to forget all the other numbers behind it, but 3.7 million. So that that's, I'm simple math. That's $1.1 million. Again, I only spent $760,000. Look at the amount of opportunity cost that it cost us to use that money. It cost us over almost $300,000 of un, we didn't get the opportunity to earn on those dollars ever again once we removed them. Now, all of you know, and you're probably thinking in the back of your brain, well, when I went out and bought that car, I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to put money back into my account and fill it back up. And, and so I can go buy another car because my, my wife likes to have a new one every three to five years, right? Well, that investment property hopefully brought you a rate of return. So you're going to get money back in and you're going to flow it back into your account, right? So, so you're going to refill your bucket. And then that, that business equity that you bought into, hopefully that brings a return and you're going to refill your bucket that way. So that's what most people do. Is they take money out of savings and then they replenish it, right? But really, let's look. We did all those things and our our money really doesn't grow, right? It, it, we're still at 4.78, 4, 4.8 thousand, right? So I'm gonna, we're a little bit behind. We had a little bit of opportunity cost over our lifetime, but we r dramatically decreased the overall expense of using our capital, right? So, so that's the one way to practice um, using money in and out of a money market account. But look at what happens. The money market account really stays the same. We didn't get anywhere with our money. We're looking at a 30 year period. If we're going to park money somewhere, we want that money to grow, right? Well, one of the things that we tell our clients to practice is you had an opportunity, you had an option when you bought that SUV, when you bought that investment property, when you bought into that business, you had an opportunity to go borrow money from somebody else. You could have borrowed money from a bank, a, a private money lender, whatever it might have been. You could have borrowed that money. They were to charge you a rate of interest. So let's say the market rate was 4% to borrow money. Well, what we would encourage you to do, if you're going to use your own capital, pay yourself back with the same interest, same respect that you would give somebody else's capital. So if the bank's going to charge you 4%, charge yourself 4%. Practice what we call economic value added, EVA. So if you're going to replenish your capital, replenish it on your terms, you know, I put in three years, four years, four years on the replenishment, you can choose that. Nobody forces you how to fill back up your savings account. You get to control the cash flow. That's why we use our own capital. If we use somebody else's capital, they're in control. But if we use our own capital, which we encourage, use it in a proper way and treat your money with the same respect and practice economic value added or EVA, and look what our balance is at the end of at the end of the 30 year period. We've we've now increased. Let's call it 4.9. Um, we've increased our balance by $100,000 just by practicing money the right way. It's nothing great, right? Now let's switch over our mind. Switch our mindset. We're going to move over to infinite banking. And what I've got to do here is when we use money from an infinite banking policy, we don't remove the money. We, we borrow against the cash value of the policy. We leverage the policy and we use the insurance contract as just a holding tank for the money because it grows guaranteed. It grows tax favored. It grows even when we use the money, we don't remove the earning potential. So we don't have any of the interrupted or the, uh, excuse me, the opportunity cost that comes along with it, with it. And we remove the banks. So, Let's just look at this first number. We, we removed the banking function from our lives and we took control of that. Look what it did. We went from 4.9 to 7.6 million just by changing the, 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 the holding place that we park our money. Now we also get to remove the IRS. I gotta move my picture out of the way. But if we turn off taxes, now look what happens. 
we've got 11.9 million, almost $12 million in this account. That's the power of infinite banking, guys. That's seven million dollars difference over a thirty-year period, just by changing the location of which we park our cash. We didn't change the cash flows. We didn't change any of the inputs or outputs. It's just a more efficient vehicle, and I hope this was helpful for you guys. Reach out to us today. We'll have a link at the bottom of this. Please give us a call. We'll we'll tell you how to do it.